this week's parasha, parasha Sachimos, after the discussion of the Avoda of Yom Kippur, there is a discussion of Shechita and Hala, slaughtering and burning offerings outside of the base of Megdish. The connection isn't apparent. Some of us understand that since we find part of the Avedas Yom Kippur involved rituals performed outside of the Beis HaMikdash, the Shiluah HaSoyer, the goat that was sent to Azazel, and likewise the burning of the bodies of the power of the Soyer took place outside of the Beis HaMikdash. So one might have thought that Avoida could be performed outside. So the Torah therefore has to reiterate that no, that all Karbonas, all Hakrava, has to take place in the base of Migdash, and therefore the Torah reiterates the prohibition of Shechita and Hala outside of the base of Migdash. I'd like to reflect a little bit about this parsha. If you look at the Ramban, the Ramban explains that there really is a machlokis tanoim, exactly what the Torah is coming to prohibit here in this parsha when it speaks about shechting outside of the base of Mikdash. There's a machlokis in Maseches Chulim, that Tezayin, between Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Akiva. It revolves around the Pasuk in Parshas Re'e. In Parshas Re'e, the Torah tells us that when Hashem expands our borders, meaning when Hashem brings us into Eretz Yisrael, and we have our own land, and the Pasuk says, and you will desire to eat meat, so the Pasuk says that you can eat meat as you desire, the Zavachta, the Bukarcha, Mitzaimcha, you should slaughter your cattle, your sheep. So the Torah seems to imply that something changed with our entry into Eretz Israel. That in the Midbar, things were a certain way, and upon entry into Eretz Israel, now things are different. What changed? So this is a Machlokas Tanoim. Rabbi Yishmael says that in the Midbar, Basar Taiva was Basar. You weren't allowed just to slaughter animals to eat meat. If a person wanted to eat meat in the Midbar, it was necessary to bring the animal to the Mishkan and to bring it as a carbon shlaman. You couldn't just eat meat. You want meat? Bring it as a carbon. So you offer the dam, you offer the chalev, and the mizbeach, and then you can eat the Basar. When they came into Eretz Yisrael, you'll be far from the base of Mikdash, so it won't be possible to bring karbonos where you live. So the Torah said, from now on, you can slaughter and eat meat, plain, not as a carb. But that's what changed. That in the middle of our bus, our taiva was usher, just to eat meat for desire was usher. If you wanted to eat meat, you had to bring it as a carb. Upon the Kinesa Laretz, the lacha was that Basar Taiva is now permitted. Rabbi Shmuel says that. Rabbi Akiva says the opposite. That really, with the Kinesa La'aretz, things became more strict. In the Midbar, Basar Nechira was mutter. You didn't even have to perform a proper shrita. You could kill the animal, stab the animal, and uh, the meat was permitted. The halachas of shrita for regular consumption, not for korbanos, but for regular consumption, only began with the entry into Eretz Yisrael. So in the Midbar, it's not just that it was not necessary to bring this a carbon, it didn't even require shechita. Upon the entry to Eretz Yisrael, things became more strict, and the lachi is now shechita is required. That's what Rabbi Kiva says. So according to Rabbi Shemayel, with the entry to Eretz Yisrael, things became more lenient, and according to Rabbi Akiva, with the entry into Eretz Yisrael, things became more strict. That's what Lachlogos Tanoi. Now comes our parsha and says as follows: Ish Ish mi Beis Yisrael, any Jew, Arshi Yishchat Shor O Kesav Who Eis B'Machana, who slaughters a bull or a sheep or a goat in the camp, O Arshi Yishchat Mi Chutz L'Machana, or he slaughters it outside of the camp, Bial Pesach O Amalei Lo Havia, or he didn't bring it to the Mishkan. Lahak of carbon Lashem, to bring it as a carbon, the Torah says that's an Aveir. So what are we talking about? 
So the Ramban says as follows, that according to Rabbi Akiva, it can't be talking about a person who slaughtered a regular animal. That was permitted in the Midbar. Not only was it permitted, <laughs> even Shechita wasn't required. So according to Rabbi Akiva, the Pasuk must be talking about Mugdashim. It must be talking about an animal that was sanctified. It was sanctified as a carbon. And the Torah is telling me if you have an animal which is sanctified as a carbon, and instead of bringing it to the Mishkan, you slaughter it in the camp, you're over the Isra of Shchut Echot, and that's an Aveira. That's how Rebekah understood it. But the Ramban says that is not the Pshut of Shemikra. That's not the simple reading of the Pasuk. Because the Pasuk doesn't mention the fact this animal was sanctified. It just says, if you slaughter a bull, or a sheep, or a goat outside of the camp, you've committed an Aveira. So the simple pshat is, like Rabbi Yishmael, that we're talking about Basar Taiba, you're slaughtering unsanctified animals just for consumption. And that was forbidden in the Midbar, and that's what the Torah is talking about. That if you slaughter such animals in the camp, or outside of the camp, and you didn't bring them to the Mishkan to bring as a carbon, You've committed an Ave. And that's what the Ramban says. The Ramban brings the Teres Kehanim, which says the Pasuk is talking about Mugdashim, the Pasuk is talking about Karbonos, says the Ramban, the Teres Kehanim is the one like Rabbi Akiva. And that's not the Pshuto Shemikra. Because the Pshuto Shemikra is as Rabbi Shmuel understands. That it's talking about animals of Chulin, regular unsanctified animals, and the Ave in question is because you didn't bring them as a carbon, you slaughter them for consumption, and in the Midbar that was prohibited. That is the Pshut Oshel Mikra, says the Ramban. But what is a little bit astounding is that what does the Torah say about this Aveira? Like, what is, what is the penalty for this Aveira? So the Torah says, Dam yechashev lo eshahu. It is considered as bloodshed. Dam shafach, he has shed blood. That person is high of Karas. So we have to understand. According to Rabbi Akiva, I understand. According to Rabbi Akiva, we're talking about a carbon. He slaughtered the carbon outside of the Mishka. That's a terrible sin. We see later in the parish, the Torah talks about a person who burns a carbon outside of the base of Migdash and also prescribes the penalty of Karas. So I understand. That makes sense. If we're talking about an animal that's Mugdash, it's Hegdash. And you slaughtered outside the Mishkan, so that could be a chiv karas. But according to Bishmael, they were talking about a behem of chulen. It's not hegdish. It's a regular animal. Okay, you're not supposed to slaughter for consumption outside of the Mishkan. In the Midbar, Basar Taiba was also. But Lachar, why is it also? It's also because if you have the easy opportunity to bring it as a carbon, you shouldn't pass up the opportunity. So in Eretz Israel, you're going to live far away from the Mishkan, okay? So you can't do it. So slaughter and eat to your heart's content. But if you're living in proximity to the Mishkan and you have the opportunity to bring this carbon, so why slaughter the animal as regular meat? <laughs> bring a carbon, and then you can uh, have the schus of a carbon. But what are you going to say? A person who doesn't take advantage of the opportunity to bring a carbon should be high karas? It's hard to understand why the Torah should have such a severe punishment for a person who does that. And so again, according to Rabbi Akiva, they were talking about a name of Mugdashim, it's a carbon. So just as we see later in the Parsha, that if you burn a carbon outside of the base of English, you're Chayav Karas. If you slaughter a carbon outside of the base of English, you're also Chayav Karas. I understand that. But according to Rabbi Shmuel, they were talking about a name of Chulim. So what's the Aveira? The Aveira is you didn't take advantage of the opportunity to bring a carbon. You could have brought the car animal as a carbon easily. You're in proximity to the Mishkan, and you didn't. Oh, you didn't bring a carbon. So what are you going to tell me? A person who doesn't bring a carbon is high of cards. Why should that be so? It's hard to understand that the terrorist is such a, a chumrah, such a penalty for this uh, Aveira. The Ramban and Rabbeinu Bechai address this point. But to fully appreciate what they say, we have to have a little background. They had tremendous chidush. There's a Gemara Sanhedrin. The Gemara Sanhedrin says in the afternoon test that Adam Harishan, 
was not allowed to eat meat. If you look in the Chumash, when the Kaddish Baruch Hu apportioned the resources of this world for man, for animals, he granted man the fruits of the trees, he granted animals the grasses, but uh, he did not give Adam Harishan permission to eat animals. So Adam Harishan was not allowed to eat Basar. That's the Gemara Daf Nun Tes. And Daf Nun Vav, Tosva says that that prohibition of Adam Harishan is only that he's not allowed to slaughter animals for meat. But if an animal died by itself, he was allowed to eat it. That's why the Torah had to prohibit Eber Menachai to Adam Rishon, Taisa says. Lachar, if Adam Rishon couldn't eat meat anyway, why does there have to be a special prohibition of Eber Menachai? The answer is because Adam Rishon was only prohibited to slaughter animals for meat. He couldn't kill for meat. But if an animal died by itself, he'd be allowed to eat it. What if an animal dropped a limb? What if a, a limb of a live animal fell off? That Adam Rishon wouldn't have been allowed to eat. That's Eber Menachai. But the prohibition is only you can't slaughter animals for meat. The Torah never tells us what the chaymer, what the severity of that aveira is. And what if Adam Rishon would have killed an animal for meat? What would that have been considered in the eyes of the Rabbanu Shloyla? We don't know. It's an aveira. Comes to Benu Bechaya in this week's parsha and says tremendous chiddush. The Ramban says the same thing. The Ramban says it more bekitzer. The Ramban says more barichas. It says here in the Pasuk again, in the Pshuto Shomikra, as the Ramban explains, we're talking about a person, Rishmol's Pshat, a person took an animal of Chulin, he could have brought it as a carbon, instead he shechted it as Chulin. And the Torah says, Dom yechashib le'ishahu, this is bloodshed, dam shafach, he spilled blood, he's chay of karas. And the question is, what is so severe? So he didn't bring a carbon. So what's so bad? So listen to what the men of Achaya says. I'll read you the words. B'yipnei shebizmano shal adam harishin hayu kobalei chayim asurim lamachal. In the times of Adam harishin, he was not allowed to eat animals. He lo hutamo ala ha'peris. He only was given the right to eat fruit. As it says in the Pasuk, he named Nasat Lochem is called Ace of Zarea Zara. I've given you all the grasses, that's called Aids, Ashabo Pre Ace, and all the trees that have fruit. It lasted that way, until the point that all the animals really were deserving of destruction. We need Solu Beschuso Shal Nayach. And they were spared in the merit of Nayach. Then they were permitted for Nayach to eat. In other words, before Nayach, Adam Rishon couldn't eat meat. But after the Mabul, since the animals were only saved from the schus of Nayach, that gave Nayach rights to eat the animals. Va'al Cain, and therefore, Yoimar Bakan, the Torah therefore here tells me the following. If a person slaughtered an animal in the camp or outside of the camp, and he didn't bring it as a carbon, it's bloodshed. It's as if he committed a murder. It goes back to the original prohibition. Shahoya Bizmano Shal Adam, which was in the time of Adam Harishan, Shaykhait Hashor Kemaka Ish. A person who slaughters a bull is like a person who kills a man. <coughs> it is like this. That when the Kharaj Baruch Hu forbade Adam Harishan to slaughter animals for meat, it wasn't just ah, Nisr. A slight isser. It was the equivalent of murder. For Adam Harishan to have killed an animal, that was the equivalent of murder. Shoichet Hashor Kemakayish. Slaughtering a bull would be like killing a man. The respect that a person is meant to have for life is not only for human life, it extends to animal life as well.
And therefore, if you are not allowed to slaughter for meat, it isn't just uh, a little ave. It's considered tantamount to murder. That's what the Rebbein of Achai and the Ramban say. Now, the Torah permitted it after the time of the Mabel, but the Torah only permitted it under certain conditions. One of the conditions in the Midbar was that it could be brought as a carbon. If you don't bring it as a carbon, you're not allowed to slaughter. You're not allowed to slaughter Basar Taiva in the Midbar. So when you slaughter an animal, not as the Torah permits, it reverts back to the original prohibition of the time of Adam Arisha. It's considered a tantamount to murder. And therefore, that's what the Pasuk says, that if you slaughter this animal of Hulin outside of the Mishkan, you should have brought it as a carbon. The Torah doesn't permit slaughtering for consumption, only slaughtering for a carbon. And instead, you brought it and you slaughtered it just for consumption. So the Torah never permitted that. When you slaughter an animal in a manner which the Torah doesn't permit, that is considered tantamount to murder. And now the Torah says, Dam Shafach, it's considered bloodshed, and therefore that's why there's a chi of karpas. An amazing, amazing chidush of the Rabbeinu Bechaya, and the Ramban says the same thing. And that's the chaymer of this Aveira, that's the severity of this Aveira. But it's hard to understand why this should be. In other words, because the prohibition really was permitted. It was permitted in the time of Nayak. For some reason, man was given the right to kill animals. So Lachara, Bizman Hazet, after Nayak, the only Avla is not bringing it as a carbon. So why should I say, because you didn't bring it as a carbon, it's Chayzerli Surah Harishim. should have the severity of the original prohibition. For whatever reason, the prohibition lapsed at the time of the Mabul. So, good, there's a new prohibition. You can't slaughter an animal for bus or tithe, only for karma. But why should I say it reverts back to the original prohibition and now it's considered like it was in the time of Lord Mauritian? It's still hard to understand. There may be another Kavanam here entirely. The Torah tells us more about this. The Torah says that the reason, or one of the reasons that you shouldn't slaughter outside of the Mishkan is they should no longer slaughter their offerings to the Shadim, Sirim or Shadim, Asherim Zainim Achreim after which they go astray. Very perplexing puzzle. Ramban has a long arichas in this. And the Ramban says that in Mitzrayim, in Mitzrayim, the Jews slaughtered animals to shade them. We know Chazal tell us in Mitzrayim the Rav Devei It says in Mitzrayim they slaughtered animals to Seirim, to these shade them. And the Torah tells us that the reason in the Midbar Hashem wants us to bring the animals as karbonas and not as basar taiva is that we should not fall back, we should not lapse and go back to the process of slaughtering animals to see them, to shade them. The Medrash Rabbah gives a muscle for this. The Medrash Rabbah says there once was a king who had a son and uh, the son became very, very uh, loose in his conduct, and he began eating the veilas, trephas. So the father said, the king said, let the son eat at the royal table every day. And uh, as a result, he will become more restrained. In other words, a person can eat in a gluttonous way, the veilas, trephas, but if he sits at the royal table long enough, in a cultured way, with a knife and a fork and a napkin, a place setting. He'll uh, chew with his mouth closed. He'll eat in a dignified manner. That will change things. So that's the idea. That in Mitzrayim, they were makriv to see him. 
they slaughtered animals to be shaded. And the Kodibarach foresaw that if the Jews in the Midbar would be allowed to slaughter animals for meat, they could slip back, they could lapse, they could fall back into the process of bringing animals to the sea. So Kodesh Baruch said that in the Midbar, better they should bring the Karbonas as Karbonas. And this way they would eat at the royal table. It's interesting, you know, the Gemara tells us in Mesechus Chulim, in Mesechus Bay, rather, that when you bring a carbon Shlomim and you eat the meat, it isn't that you gave the Chalev and the Dam to Hashem and the meat is yours. Really, you give the whole animal to Hashem and the meat is Mishulchan Gavaya. You're eating the meat at the divine table. So here too, if instead of slaughtering the animal for your own personal consumption, you bring the animal as a carbon, now you're eating at the Shulchan Gavaya, the Shulchan Gavaya refines a person. It, it uplifts a person. It will wean the Jews away from the practice of offering to the seed. That's the matter Shabbat says. So the reason that Kaddish Baruch Hu wants us to bring these animals as korbanos and forbids Basar Taiva is the process of weaning us away from the Sivim. Just as an aside, according to Bikiva, that we're not talking about Basar Taiva. Basar Taiva was mutter in the Midbar. It was only Mugdash, only Karbanas. So what does the Pasuk mean that, and they won't continue offering to Sivim? So the Gmaran Zvach and Kofav says the Pshat, and this is how the Bikiva learns, that the Torah is telling us that if you bring a carbon, Bachot, Hashem considers it as if you brought it to Havai Dezar. And that's the connection. But according to Rabbi Shmuel, the Pshat is Kipshuto. That the reason the Torah forbade Basar Taiva is because Hashem wants to wean us away from the Avaida of Sirim, which was practiced in Mitzrayim. So Hashem says, better bring the animals as korbanos. You'll eat at the royal table, you'll eat at the Shulchan Gavaya, and this slowly will win you away from the temptation to offer the Sirim. This is what the Medrash Rabba says. Agav, I'll tell you a very interesting question. The Meshachach may ask, so if so, why did it change upon the entry to Eretz Yisrael? Why did it change upon the entry to Eretz Yisrael? If the purpose of bringing the animals as korbanos is to prevent us from lapsing back into Avayda Zara, so uh, when we came into Eretz Yisrael, that shouldn't change. We should also need safeguards not to lapse back into Avayda Zara. So to say, because it's inconvenient, it's hard to imagine. So the Meshachachma just says something very cute. The Meshachachma says that the Gemara tells us that there was a taina on Yeshua ben Nun, the Gemara says, that Yeshua ben Nun should have davened to mevatel the Yitzhahara for Avayda Zara, just like the Anshe Knesset HaGadayla did in the time of the Bayashani. There was a taina on Yeshua. Why was there no taina on Moshe Rabbeinu? The Moshe Rabbeinu should have done it. So the Gemara says, no, Moshe Rabbeinu didn't have the schus of Eretz Yisrael. Therefore, since he didn't have the schus of Eretz Yisrael, he couldn't daven to Mavatli Yitzhar of Avodah But Yeshua, since he ended Eretz Yisrael, he had the schus of Eretz Yisrael, he could have davened to Mavatli the Yitzhar for Avodah Zara. Therefore, there's a time on him that he didn't do so, and it wasn't achieved until the time of the Bayashani, that Danshik Nesses Abdullah, in fact, davened or Mavatli Yitzhar of Avodah So it says the Meshach Achma that there's no need for a safeguard in Eretz Yisrael. In Eretz Yisrael, there's a better Eitzah, not to slip into the practice of Sirium, just daven to take away the Eitzhar HaVoyed Azara. Because for that, the Schus of Eretz Yisrael helps. It says, but only as long as they were in the Midbar, there they wouldn't have the Schus of Eretz Yisrael. There, there was a danger of lapsing into HaVoyed Azara, and therefore the Torah says, as a safeguard, instead of slaughtering the animals stam, slaughter the animals as Korbanas in the Mishkan, and that will prevent you from lapsing into HaVoyed Azara. That's the very cute shot that the Meshachachma says. But this is how the Meshachachma understands the idea of Sirim, that it's Avaydah Zara, and uh, slaughter the Kavanas to Hashem to prevent falling into the trap of Avaydah Zara. Rav Hirsch in his commentary understands the idea of slaughtering to Sirim in a different way. The idea of slaughtering to the Sirim is not Avaydah Zara. There's another issue involved over here. Now, there's a very interesting thing we should reflect on for a few moments the difference between a human being and an animal. 
Because we tend to think that a human being is superior to an animal. And uh, there are very solid grounds for assuming that. We're more intelligent, we're more talented, we have certain mindless, we can communicate, we can reason. So uh, it's very simple for us to say that a human being is superior to an animal. But it's obvious that there were certain cultures which didn't think so. In other words, let's think about the various nations and the Avaidazaras they worshipped. We know that certain nations worshipped Avaidazaras that were in the images of people. If you look at the ancient Greeks, the ancient Romans, their gods and goddesses were in the forms of human beings. Uh, beautiful human beings, very strong human beings, very handsome human beings, but human beings. So we understand that they undoubtedly saw the human being as being the top of the hierarchy, and therefore they created gods in their own images as human beings. But we know there were societies that worshipped animals. Right? Mitzrayim worshipped the sheep, they worshipped the cow. So what is the idea of a worship, a deification of an animal? Like, I'm a human, and I'm worshiping an animal? In what way? An animal is my god? The animal is my superior? What is the idea that your getchka should be an animal? The idea is that there is another way of looking at it. To certain societies, the animal was superior to the human being. The animal is strong, the animal is free. The animal doesn't have any psychological hang-ups. <laughs> you know, human beings have all sorts of uh, dilemmas they grapple with. Stresses and problems. You don't find animals have that. Animals seem to be always happy. They're always content. They're never complaining, at least <laughs> as far as we can tell. No, they seem to be free. They seem to be part of nature, right? Human beings have all sorts of hang-ups. So the truth is that there were certain societies which deify the animals. They're strong, they're powerful, they're free. They don't have any of the deficiencies that human beings have. And therefore, these nations, when they created gods, they created the gods as animals. They worshipped animals. They saw something superior and noble in the, in the animals. When they slaughtered animals, this was part of a cult in which they tried to join the animal. We'll see later in the parsha. The post talks about eating blood. And the Torah tells us that a Jew can't eat blood, and in the case of a wild animal, a chaya or a bird, you have to even cover the blood. Now, it's a hard thing to understand. What is the temptation to, to eat blood? We know, the Pesach says, the, the nefesh, the soul, is in the blood. The soul is mislavish. The animal soul is mislavish. It's contained within the blood. So what would eating blood do for a person? Eating blood would incorporate the animal into the person himself. The human being could rise to the level of an animal, so to speak, he could strengthen the animal within him by consuming the blood of the animal, which is the nefesh of the animal. And that's a very tempting thing within a certain cultural frame of reference. This is a very, very tempting thing. To, to elevate myself from the level of human to the level of animal by consuming the blood, which is the nefesh, which is the very life force of the animal. Which animals what a person most wants to become like? The domesticated animals or the wild animals? Undoubtedly the wild animals. And therefore the Torah says there's a special harchaka. You can't eat the blood of any animal. It says, but the blood of wild animals, it's not just you can't eat it, you have to cover it up. There's a special harchaka, the first says. There's a special distancing, the Torah says, to keep the issue off limits. So the blood of an animal, of a domesticated animal, we don't need an extra harchaka. There the Torah says, You can't eat it. 
So you can spill it on the ground like water. It's all right. You can sit on the ground open. As long as you don't eat it, that's okay. But when it comes to save chaya ba'ayf, you slaughter one of the wild animals. See, there's an extra danger. This is especially tempting to take the, the wild blood and bring it into yourself. So there the Torah says it's not enough to tell you not to eat it. Here the Torah warns you that you have to cover it, you have to bury it, it has to be concealed, it has to be off limits, because the temptation here is much greater, and you have to set it apart. That's the idea of the Isra of Dan, which the Torah speaks about, again, in the continuation of the same parasha. Now this is the idea, the desire of the human being to, to become an animal. Needless to say, from the perspective of a Jew, becoming an animal is the last thing we want to do. The idea of a Jew is the Jew should make himself less of an animal. He should rise above those aspects of his being which he shares in common with animals and become more human and, and more lofty. Eating blood the Torah prohibits. But in theory, even eating bosser, the Torah should prohibit. Adam Rishon wasn't allowed to eat bosser. Not just blood. Not just blood, which is the nefesh, which is the life force of the animal. He couldn't even eat the meat of the animal. Right? Now, the Lord wanted that Adam Rishon should be totally human. Right? He should not eat anything of an animal. He shouldn't introduce the blood into himself, not even the bosser into himself. Absolutely. Adam Rishon had to maintain his humanity. What changed? What changed after the Mabel, that a Kodesh Baruch committed Adam Rishon to eat meat? So Rav Hirsch says an amazing thing back in Parshas Nayak. He says that a Kodesh Baruch had to permit Basar to Nayak because there was an error. There was an error that human beings began to make. Human beings began to understand that the prohibition of Basar is not because we are meant to be superior to the animal, and therefore should not integrate anything of the animal into ourselves. They began to make the mistake and think the reason we can't eat basar is because we're no better than animals. So what gives us the right to eat meat? We're not any better than animals. Now this is a very subtle mistake, but it's a mistake which is easily made. In reality, the Torah says don't eat meat. Why? Because a human being is superior to an animal. He shouldn't introduce into his being anything which is part of an animal. This is in order for him to maintain his superior humanity, not to pull himself down by consuming any part of an animal. But the mistake is, people begin to think that we're no better than animals, we are fundamentally the same as animals. And the first goes on to explain that that mistake leads to a very serious problem. Because what is one of the differences between a human being and an animal? An animal doesn't have to make any moral judgments. An animal is totally justified in following its intuition. Because the teva, which I've got a verbal implanted in the animal, guarantees the animal will do the right thing. The animal will do what it's meant to do. A human being is not so. A human being has the HRR, a human being has nisyonis, a human being has to exercise moral judgment. When a man begins to think of himself as an animal, he says, well, if the animals can follow their instincts, I can follow my instincts. And this is a mistake which we see even in People say, if I have an urge to do this, if I have a desire to do this, that must be normal. You know, the, the argument for homosexuality goes along those lines. That if there are certain individuals who have a desire for this type of conduct, that must be normal. So it must be normal. How can it be shunned? How can it be objected to? Of course, what's the answer? The answer is that there are many desires which we find morally objectionable. Why don't we say if a person has a desire to overeat, that should be considered acceptable. If a person has a desire to uh, commit theft, kleptomania, <laughs> that should be considered normal. The answer is we all understand that human beings have desires which have to be overcome. That's why a human being has moral judgment. That's why he has das. Right? To be able to reason and make good decisions. 
the mere fact he has a desire doesn't mean that the, the object of that desire is uh, to be pursued. But this is a mistake that was made at the time of the Mabel. So how can it be corrected? So it says to first, I thought his Baruch who had to permit man to eat meat in order to establish that man is a category unto himself. He's a notch above. He's a notch higher. He is not an animal. He is superior to an animal, and that gives him rights over the animal. But there's a price you pay for that. The price you pay is if you're going to eat meat, you may be incorporating some of the animal into you. So the pshara is, you can eat meat, but just not blood. And also, not Aver Menachai. Aver Menachai is also consuming the life force. Like Saichal HaNefesh Ima Bosa. So for the same reason you can't eat blood, you can't eat Aver Menachai as well. If we want to reduce the damage that consumption of animals can cause, so we insist it has to be dead. It can't have the life force in it. So it can't be Aver Menachai, and it can't be down. It can't be blood, because down is also the Nefesh. So here, even though there's a price you pay, because you are eating meat, but nevertheless, it is not as bad as eating Abram and Achai or eating blood. But this is the idea. The idea of the prohibition to Adam Rishon is that man has to maintain his integrity as a human being, not incorporate himself into himself that which degrades him and lowers him to the level of animal. So that was the avoid of the Seirim. The avoid of the Seirim was not avoid of Zara. It wasn't that they worshipped the Seirim. It says they slaughtered animals to these animal-like shadim because they wanted to become attached to them in some way. They wanted to incorporate animal characteristics into themselves. And therefore the Torah says that we have to prevent that. How do we prevent that? So the way to prevent that in the Midbar was to bring all the animals as, as korbanos. How would that solve the problem? So it's very interesting. I just want to point out that the, the Gemara in Sanhedrin, which talks about Adam Harishan eating basar, asks a kasha and says, how can you tell me that Adam Harishan couldn't eat basar? The Gemara brings a A brisa, which says, "Oh, the Mauritian Mesa began Eden Haya. He would recline in Eden on his couch. Vayu Malachi Ashara Sodom Le Bosser, and the angels would roast meat for him. So it says he ate meat. So the Gemara says, and that's why the Nachash was jealous. So the Gemara says, Hasam be Bosser Hayered Min Ashamayim. That meat." was Basar Hayerid Menashemayim. That was Basar that came down from heaven. That wasn't the regular meat. So the Gemara says, what do you mean? Umi Ika Basar Hayerid Menashemayim? Is there such a thing as Basar that comes from Menashemayim? And yes, there is. Ki ha de Reb Shimon ben Chalafta. Like the Maeser Reb Shimon ben Chalafta. Have a kazl He was traveling on the road. Pogu ba hamach ar He encountered lions. They were roaring before his face. So how is he going to appease the lions? They're going to eat him alive. So Amar, he said, apostle can tell him, Hakfirim shayagim leteref. The lions are screaming for food. So what happened? Nachisu tarti atmosa. So two thighs of animals came down from heaven. So chada achlua, one he gave the lions to eat, the Chara Shavkua, one of them they left. Asiv Asl Bey Medrasha. So he brought it to the Mesa Medrash. This, this thigh of the animal that came out from heaven. So by Allah, they asked the question, Dabar Tamehu, is that a Dabar Tahar? Is this kosher or not? Right, this meat that came out from heaven, is it kosher or not? So Amrulahem, so he answered back, Ain Dabar Tameh Yerid Menashemayim. Nothing from heaven is Tomei. If it comes from heaven, you know it's Tar. So the Gemara said, said, well, what if the animal that came down looked like a donkey? What would you say then? So he said, Amr la yarod He says, you foolish bird. 
Ha'amrile, right, we said, ain't dover tamu yerdim in a shemayim. Even if it looks like a donkey, which is a non-kosher animal, but if it came from shemayim, you know that it's kosher. And the idea is like this, that on earth, there are things that are spiritually negative. So if you eat basar on earth, that can be detrimental. But if you eat basar in Ashamayim, that's no problem. So Adam Rishon wasn't allowed to eat meat. Why? Because as we said, it was spiritually detrimental. Right? It would degrade him, it would debase him, it would lower him to the level of animal. But if Adam Rishon would eat basar in Ashamayim, that wouldn't have any harmful effect. So that's the same idea, a carbon. When you bring a carbon, as we said, the Gemara Beya says, it's not the Pshat, you gave a Kosh Baruch the Dam and the Chalev, and the Basar is left for the person to eat. The whole thing is given to the Ribbon Shloilam, and now it's Mishulchan Gulai, you're eating from the heavenly table. That's Basar Menash Shemayim. Basar Menash Shemayim causes no problem. So therefore the Torah says, don't slaughter the animals for regular consumption, because that's tantamount to Seirim. Just like the animals that you slaughter to the Seirim are really to introduce the animal aspect into yourself, so if you would slaughter animals, good, you didn't have kavana for a serum, but it's the same thing potentially. So the ideal is to bring it as karbonas. So if you bring it as karbonas, that's already basim and ashamai, and basim and ashamai has no spiritual detriment. But now we say different shot in the pasuk, different than Rabbeinu Bechaya says, different than Ramban says. Now the Torah says, if you take the animal, and instead of bringing it as a carbon, you slaughter it. And this was at the time in the Midbar where there was a danger of falling into the trap of Seirim. So it's called Dam Yechashim Le'ishahu Dam Shafach. It's considered bloodshed. We're not talking about bloodshed of the animal. It's not because it's tantamount to killing the animal. It's tantamount to killing the human being. The human being has totally undermined his own humanity. He has killed himself. And I saw later the Chassam Seifer says this pshat. It's a totally different mahalach. But he understands that dam yechashev, dam shafach, doesn't refer to the animal that you killed. It refers to the person himself. The person himself has slaughtered himself. The person has debased himself. If he had the opportunity to bring the meat and eat baser min hashemayim, and instead he eats baser, which lowers him to the level of animal, so then this is something that he, he in a sense committed suicide on himself. That's Dam Yechashev, that's Dam Shof. And that's what the Torah is so machmir. The Torah is so machmir because that is the first obligation a human being has. The first obligation a human being has is to maintain his own humanity. If you, if you commit suicide, if you kill yourself as a human being, then there's no punishment in the Torah which is severe enough to be applied to that person. It could be, Le Fize, that this really is the the Hemshech of the Parshias in the, in the Torah. The connection of this Parsha is really to the Parsha which follows. The Parsha which follows, the end of the Parsha, is the Parsha of Arias. The Parsha of Arias. And this is always the question in Arias. A person has an urge, he has a temptation. He has an attraction to a woman to whom he should not be attracted. A man has an attraction to another male. A person has an interest in an animal. Right? All the forms of perversion that are mentioned in the Torah. The question is, if a person has a desire, so why shouldn't he act upon it? Why shouldn't uh, he assume that this is how I was made, this is how God has made me? What, what is wrong with pursuing by gratification. Animals do it all the time, and they're totally justified for doing so. The whole parsha of Arias, right, is based on the assumption that a human being is not meant to follow his impulses. That a human being is fundamentally different than an animal. An animal is totally justified in following its instincts. Why? Its instincts are pure. Its teva is natural. If it follows what it wants to do, it follows its natural impulse, that is totally acceptable for an animal. But a human being is different, because a human being was put in this world to be nisnasa, he's put in this world to be tested. The fact that a human being has an impulse and a desire doesn't mean that it's meant to be followed, it means that it's meant to be overcome. This is his test, this is his challenge, this is his nisoyim. 
And that understanding that a, a human being is fundamentally different than an animal, this is the idea which underlies the entire parish of Arias. Right? An animal goes through as Arias. Right? Animals follow their reproductive instincts, and uh, that's the way it's supposed to be. A human being doesn't follow his instincts. A human being has to exercise reason and judgment. And that is the foundation of the parish of Arias which follows. So before the Torah lays down the parsha of Arias, the Torah gives the introductory parsha, which deals with the fundamental issue of human being versus animal, right? The serum of dam, the issue of slaughtering Basar Taiva, etc., which all revolve around this issue of the safeguards the human being has to make to ensure that he not debase himself to the level of animal. That is the psicha to all that follows. The parsha of Arias that follows is based on this assumption. And therefore, thematically, this parsha, the parsha of slaughtering outside in the Yishurim of Adam, all lead into this very, very important issue. And ultimately, it all leads into next week's parsha, which is the idea of Kedushim to you. The idea of Kedusha right, is the idea of being devoted to a higher purpose. This is only possible when we see ourselves as fundamentally different than the animals. If we are essentially just a smarter animal, a more intelligent animal, um, etc., a more developed uh, social animal, then there's no concept of kedusha. There's no concept of living for a higher purpose or for a higher end. We are just part of nature. We don't rise above nature. The essence of kedusha is that we rise above nature. Everything else in the world is functions in accordance with its teva. We function in accordance with reason, in accordance with what our intelligence tells us, in accordance with ideals, that is the essence of what it means to be a, a kadosh. And therefore, all that follows in these parashiyas, the idea of arayas befrat, the idea of kadusha bechlal, all is rooted in this fundamental distinction of man and animal, the surim of dam, the surim of shechting, basar taiva, all relate to this idea. It's the idea of affirming our unique humanity as opposed to taking on the personality and characteristics of the animal.